Hello, my name is Philip Hubbard, and I work at the Genalia Research Campus of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Today, I'm going to teach you an easy way to make nice looking videos from neuroscience data. We'll start with Newgrip, which is a web based system for browsing a large collection of neurons and neural connections from the Drosophila fruit fly, released by Genalia in 2020. We'll take what we see there and bring it over to NewVid, which is a set of scripts that use Blender to make the video with smooth animation and believable shading and shadows. The setup is easy, and the hands-on time is only a few minutes, so I hope you'll give it a try. Let's get started. The setup just involves two steps, installing Blender and installing NuVid. Let's start by installing Blender. Go to blender.org go to the download page and then click on this button to download and you'll get an installer like this and if you double click on that you install Blender. I've already done that so let's go to the next step of installing NuVid. You can search for the GitHub site and go to the code button. Now we could download a zip file and extract it to get the scripts for NuVid, but a better approach is to use Git. So we'll copy the Git URL and then go to a terminal. If you don't have a terminal open, you can do command spacebar and type terminal, launch it that way. And then in the terminal, type git clone and then paste the URL you copied. And that gives you the code. Git should be installed by default on Mac and Linux systems, and it's easy to install on Windows. Now we're ready to make some content. So we'll go to the Newprint site, newprint.genalia.org. I'm already logged in over here. The first time you use Newprint, you log in with your Google credentials, as in your Gmail address and then you can start searching for neurons. I like the mushroom body output neurons, MBON. So we'll search for one of those and then click on this little eye icon to see it. Comes up in the skeleton viewer, looks nice, but what we really want to do is see it in Neuroglancer. So we'll switch to that tab and get the 3D view. For the first video we're making, we don't really want to see synapses, so I'll left click on this tab here to make them go away. Now I come over to this button, copy view URL to clipboard. I press that and the clipboard gets the information about what Neuroglancer is showing and then we can import that into NuVid. So we come back to the shell, we run Blender, and we run it in the background. So instead of having a user interface, it runs this Python script. And we do two dashes here, and then say we want to output it to example1.json. Well, that's going to take the Neuroglancer information from the clipboard and process it into a JSON file that we'll use to control the rest of the video generation. Now I can press the up arrow in the shell to get the previous command again and edit it. Now I'm going to use that JSON file as input to the script to bring down the meshes that I want to see. When that's done, I can run another script, taking that JSON file, to add some animation. And now I'm ready to render. For the rendering, I'm using the cycles renderer in Blender, which gives global illumination effects, these nice shading and shadows you see here. This is an example of a 
more complicated data set that I rendered earlier. This looks quite a bit nicer than the traditional simple illumination you get in, say, a interactive graphics application. You can really get a better idea of the, the shape of the neurons. The rendering produces a lot of individual frame images, so what we need to do to finish the video is assemble all those frames into a video. There's one more script to run. And now we have a video file here next to all the individual frames. And take a look at that. It looks pretty good. So we're ready to try something fancier. But first, I want to say a little bit about Linux and Windows. I have a remote desktop onto a Linux system here, and it's pretty similar to Mac OS. Um, when you download Blender, you get this compressed tar file, and you can move it pretty much anywhere you want, and uncompress and extract it, and then you get the Blender executable. You can see I put it here in user local Blender. And then you run it in a terminal. Get a terminal like this, and you just run it pretty much the same way you would in Mac OS. Now on Windows, I have a remote desktop onto a Windows system here. It's a little different in that when Blender is installed, it goes into a specific place that has the version number in the, in the name. You can see here it's under program files. Now program files has a space in it, so that makes an extra step you have to do when you're running it in the command prompt. And by the way, you get a command prompt by doing the search and then choosing command. I have one here. And then you just have to remember to put quotes around the path to the Blender executable so that it can run. You can just see that here, get the clipboard, then run that, and it works the way we want and gives us the JSON file that we use for the rest of the process. Now we're ready to try something fancier, so we'll go back to NewPrint. And the real power of NewPrint is that it shows us the connections between neurons. So let's look at what our mushroom body output neuron outputs to. We can pick this neuron here. That looks interesting. So we'll go to the NeuroGlancer view. And for this fancier video, we're going to keep the synapses in, so we don't need to hide them there. We just grab the NeuroGlancer information from the clipboard, put the NeuroGlancer information into our JSON file. Now we'll use that as input for importing the meshes. And add a little animation. Now before we render this, let's take a look at it in the interactive Blender application so we can see what we have. So we can do launch Blender, and we'll load 
it's this example to animation blend file that we want to look at. That's what got created by the add animation. Can zoom in a little bit. So we see some interesting stuff here, but it's also a little bit crowded. There are more synapses than we want to see, and we don't have any staging. Everything's visible all at once, rather than having things come on progressively one after another, which should make it easier to see what's going on. So let's fix that. We can go and edit the JSON file that we created. Now to edit it, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. It's a nice free editor that we can download. Just go to VS Code. And then you could download it. It works on pretty much any system. So here it is, and we're going to open that JSON file that we created. And you see here it's got a section that describes how to get the neuron meshes, and a section here that describes how to get the synapses, and then a section here that has commands to specify the animation. Currently it's very simple. Now, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go back here for a minute and find which neuron is the mushroom body output neuron. So to see that its ID ends in 5. And that would be this N2 here. So we can say N2 is mbon01. Now you notice that the Visual Studio Editor is telling us something isn't quite right there. Normal JSON doesn't allow comments, but fortunately they have a mode that does allow comments, and the new vid scripts will strip the comments out, so you can put them in if you want. So that just reminds us that N2 is the MBON we're interested in. Okay, now to reduce the number of synapses we see, we can edit this part in here. We want to have the outputs from the MBON, so that would be the N2 presynaptic sites. And then the inputs from the other one, that would be the N1 postsynaptic sites. So we want to delete this, and we want to delete this. Now, notice I'm getting a little error here from the trailing comma. With JSON, you, you can't have a comma at the end of a, a section like that. So just remove that. It's nice that the Visual Studio Code tells us about that. So now we've got the synapses set up the way we want, and we can add the animation to do the staging. Now, in the animation, we have lists of commands, and each command has a name of a command, and then arguments as a dictionary of key value pairs. So we're going to add a new command. This is the fade command, and its arguments specify what uh, we want to fade. So we're going to first fade neurons n1, and then we want it to start out hidden. and become fully visible. And we want that to take, say, two seconds. That works out pretty well. Now we also want to make the synapses, the N1 post, do the same thing, fade on. And finally, we want to have the N2 pre do the same thing. Get rid of that trailing comma. So that looks pretty good until you notice that we haven't said anything about the timing here to, to get that staging effect that we want. So we can add another command to do that. And this is called 
the advance time command. And so we want to have the first visibility change occur, say, two and a half seconds in to the 10 second orbiting. So that's a quarter of the way in. And then we'll repeat that throughout all of these. So they'll be evenly spaced. And I think that should uh, give a pretty nice effect. So let's save this. And then we'll go back to our shell here. We didn't change what meshes are brought in or imported. We took a few out, but we didn't add any more new ones. So we don't have to run the import scripts anymore. We only have to run the add animation again. And that sort of explains why they're split out. So you, when you're working on your animation, you might iterate and run add animation many times. And you don't want to have to take the time of running the import scripts. So now we'll go back to Blender and bring that one in again. And let's see what we have now when we run it. So we see some staging of the other neuron and some staging of the synapses. And I think that looks pretty good. So we can stop and go back here. And now all we need to do is render it. When the rendering's done, we can assemble the frames again. And then we can go take a look at the video. To wrap up, here's a summary of the steps again. In NewPrint, copy the NeuroGlancer URL into the clipboard and then run the NuVid scripts. To remind you of the order, I'll just write them out. First is import ng.py, then it's import meshes, then add animation render, and finally, assemble frames. If you discover any problems as you're doing this, feel free to create an issue on the NuVid GitHub site. I hope that's enough to get you started with NuVid. There's a lot more you can do with it and I've used it to make a number of neuroscience videos for presentations and publications. I'm also starting to use it with some cell biology data. To learn more about NuVid, check the documentation on the GitHub site. Thanks for watching and have fun making videos.